Well, to review where we were last time, uh, we were talking about what kind of problems were solvable or not solvable. And, and this might have been a notion that you've heard of before, right? You, you probably might have heard uh, or picked up on this idea that if I have the same number of equations and variables, uh, that's usually going to be a solvable problem. Uh, whereas if I have more equations and I have variables, then I'm often in, in trouble. Another thing we talked about last time is how we could represent all the numbers involved in our equations uh, with matrices. So the way I might translate that rule then is that generally things work well when I have square matrices, right? Because I have a column for each variable and a row for each equation, right? So having a square matrix means I have the same number of rows and uh, that means I have the same number of variables and equations. Um, and then when I have more, uh, more equations than variables or I might have more rows than columns, then I'm probably in trouble, but not necessarily, right? It really depends on the data, data I'm dealing with. And, uh, and so for certain data, right, for certain y values, I'm actually going to be able to solve the problem I'm interested in, but for most, I'm not. And so the idea I left you with last time is that if we have a solve unsolvable problem, is there a way we can uh, kind of replace that unsolvable problem with a problem that we can solve and choose the problem that we can solve that's as closest to our original as possible? And so if we solve that new problem, we'll have some answer that is still some, somewhat meaningful in some way. So to do this, uh, uh, practically actually kind of do the number crunching, I have to introduce this idea of a projection matrix. And I have here the formula for a projection matrix. So for any, any given x values we might have, I can use this equation right here and get a projection matrix. And there's things in this uh, equation that we haven't uh, talked about yet. For example, I have this negative one here, I'm gonna be mentioning that. And, and I'm not trying to tell you where this formula comes from, that's not uh, in the scope of this course. I just wanna think about how we can uh, reason about what it's doing and then actually write Python code for it. So this projection matrix that we have uh, does a couple nice things for us when we multiply it in front of another vector. Uh, if I multiply a matrix by some vector, then the result is some new vector. And in, in some ways, then I like to almost think of, uh, of matrices as functions, right? You multiply it by a vector to the vector. It's almost as if I have an input vector and an output vector. And, um, and so the output vector, the thing I get back when I multiply B by my input, uh, has a couple nice properties. Uh, first, uh, the vector I get back is going to be in the column space of x. And one of the ideas I introduced last time was that when our y is in the column space of x, then I'm able to solve for c, whether or not, whether or not I have a square matrix. Right, so this is nice, right? So uh, one of the things I'm seeing is that if my input vector is say a y that is causing me trouble, the output vector it's going to give me back is, is going to represent something that's a solvable problem. So that's great. Um, is, that, is that impressive in and of itself? No, it's not. And one reason is that you could imagine what if P was just giving me back um, the zero vector, right? It's just a bunch of zeros. Um, as I mentioned last time, the zero vector is in the column space of every single matrix, right? And so that's not great. And, and so it'd be solvable, but you know the problem I'd be solving would be totally unlike the original problem. I'd be ignoring all the data. I'd just be turning into this kind of arbitrary uh, solvable problem. So the second property is what is actually pretty cool when we think about it in conjunction with the first. Um, that new vector that I'm getting back, that output vector, is going to be as close to the original vector as possible, right? And I'm just trying to be hand, hand wavy here for now. What does it mean? To be close eventually i'll define that better uh, but just know that hey i'm creating this solvable problem that's actually kind of similar to the original problem so to put it in, into mathematical terms uh, there is no solution to xc equals y and and so what we're going to do is we're going to get a new vector instead of y i'm going to say that p equals my projection matrix times y right so i'm going to replace y with p and, uh, and then I'm just going to, in this original equation, you know, I can't solve this. I'm just going to swap out y for that p, and I get here. I'm, I'm going to try to solve uh, xc uh, equals p. And, uh, and this is a good problem because, because while well, it's solvable, right? I, I saw up here 
P is going to be in the column space of X. So I know I can solve this problem. And, and then second, I know that this P vector is pretty close to Y, right? So I'm solving something that's pretty close to my original problem. Um, let, let's try to actually do the number crunching in Python with that example I left you with last time. Um, last time I started off with a nice problem where I had um, uh, the same number of, of variables and, uh, and, and rows. And, and then I added this little trouble at the end. I added a duplicate uh, basket, right? So the basket had the same number of apples, bananas, and, uh, you know, and I had one basket. And, and these two baskets that are identical um, sold for different values, right? So if I was trying to solve the system of equations, uh, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be able to do it because I'd be looking at my last two equation, equations and I'd see, well, the left-hand side of these two looks the same, but the right-hand side of these two looks different, right? So that's a contradiction. Uh, if I'm ever going to be able to solve this kind of problem, say, you know, where I have uh, these additional rows, um, these last two uh, better have the same price on, on the right. If, that, if they had had the same price, then this would have been a solvable problem and I wouldn't have this trouble. Okay, so this is my Y right here. Uh, I'm gonna do like I described above and see if I can compute that P vector. And if I'm computing the P vector properly, well, the last two values in the P vector better be the same, right? Because that's the only case this turns into some sort of solvable problem. Okay, so here I have again that formula for my projection matrix. I'm gonna do that. And, uh, and so I'm gonna say P equals and uh, and I have start with x, and then when I have um, uh, when I just have these two matrices together like this, these two values, that means I need to do the dot product. So when I'm translating from the mathematical notation to Python, I should say dot dot product, and I have some stuff there in parentheses, and then then at the end I have another dot product with uh, x transpose, and the way I do x transpose in Python is just x dot t. Okay, so what about this part here, and what is this negative one? Uh, negative one uh, means that, as an exponent, means that I want to take what we call the inverse of a matrix. And, and that's another thing you learn about uh, if you took like a full linear algebra course. I'm not trying to talk about what uh, uh, an inverse means. I'm just trying to tell you how to uh, compute it um, in Python and NumPy. And so I could say numpy.linearalgebra.inverse and then I can pass in some sort of matrix here, and that matrix better be square. So let me try doing this. I'm gonna try passing in x, t, and x. So I'm gonna say x dot t uh, dot product x, and I can see, great, I can uh, take the inverse of that, right? And, and, the, and this matrix here has some nice properties I'm not trying to talk about. But anyway, so just trying to translate the math to Python, I can copy this and put this right here, and, uh, and I'm gonna end up with, this kind of weird looking projection matrix. So let's use it and see if it has these nice properties I talked about. Um, I'm gonna say P uh, dot product Y. I'm gonna get back this projection matrix here, or this, uh, this vector. And you can see this has the exact properties that I was hoping for. These last two values are the same now, right? So, so I'm kind of imagining like, well, what if these two baskets didn't sell for original prices. I'm going to fix it up by pretending they did sell for the same value. And that value I'm pretending is somewhere between 8 and 8.5. This is going to be a solvable problem. And I can also see that uh, this vector I produced uh, is not only gives me something solvable, but it's very close to my y, right? So I can see, you know, with y I have 7, with p I have 7.04. Up here I have 5, down here I have 5.04. So this is a great vector, and, and then I'd be able to solve it. Um, I want to visually show you what's happening too, and, uh, and I can't quite do it with the fruit, uh, fruit example, because I want to create this scatter plot. And with the fruit example, I have too many variables. So, so what I'm going to do down here is I'm going to make up a new problem that'll be something like this. I'm going to say uh, numpy.random.random. Uh, and if I do that, I can get these numbers. This is just a Gaussian um, kind of sampling from a normal distribution. And, uh, and if I wanted to, I could, uh, I could compute a column from this. So I could say something like, you know, size equals, um, let, let, let's have like uh, 10 rows and one column, right? So I'm computing this nice column of random numbers. 
And I'm going to say that is, uh, that's x, right? So there's x. Um, let me also get some uh, y values. So I'm going to say, uh, say something like this. I'm going to say, actually, maybe that's, is that uniform? I think I want to do normal was what I was saying I was doing. Let, let me, let me um, what else do I have here? So I can look at the scale and location. So maybe I'll say like the, uh, the location of this is five and, um, and the scale is, let's say two. Okay, great. Sorry. I think it was doing like a uniform random when I just said random. Now it's normal. Great. So I have some random X values. Um, let's say that I have some Y values as well. And, and there's a relationship between the Y values. I'll say that, I don't know, Y equals um, uh, two times X. Let, let me just do that. I have some Y values. But let's say there, there's some noise in the system. So I'm going to say, um, I'm going to add in some noise. And I can, I can just do that the same way. I can say numpy.random.normal. And then the size here is just going to be, well, whatever the shape of X is. Right? Maybe, maybe I'm just trying to kind of peek at this and try to see what that noise looks like. Right? I'm just doing some small values. I mean, sometimes a little bit more than one, sometimes a little less than one. And, uh, and I'm adding that up to my signal here, right? So I have two times X plus this noise. So I get these Y values. So, so if I wanted to, I could uh, create a data frame from all of this. Um, maybe I should, should actually head back here and say something like um, import pandas as PD. And then down here, I can create my data frame. So I'm going to say uh, pandas.dataframe. And then uh, I can have these uh, a dictionary of columns, right? So I could say X is X, and then Y is is Y, and then I could look at that, and um, and, and why is that unhappy? Um, well, let me just try this and see if I have any um, any more locks. I think my Y. Uh, is like that. You, you know what I think it's trying to do is that I already have, um, you, you notice that I already have uh, in two dimensions and I'm expecting something one dimensional here. So, so maybe I'll just actually uh, reshape this to be just one dimensional since I'm imposing this new structure on it. So I'm going to do that and, and it's still not happy. What is it saying now? Arrays must have the same length. Uh, I sure would have thought they would have had the same length. Let me, let me just peek at both of these. I must have done something wrong here. So I have that one, and then I have this here, my Y. If I, if I look at the size, of, the size and shape of that, that's smaller for some reason. Did I already run some other code earlier? You, you know what it was. I think when I was importing up here, I changed what my Y was, and that's why it was breaking. Now, now I'm actually curious if I actually had to do this reshape. What if I have it just like this? Is it, is it going to be okay with that? Okay, I guess I still need to flatten it. Okay, great. So I have this thing, and uh, and now I can actually plot it, right? I could say uh, data frame dot plot dot. Actually, I'm just gonna leave it there for now. I'm gonna do it in another cell. I'm gonna say down here, uh, data frame dot plot dot scatter uh, x equals my x column, y equals my y column, and uh, and maybe I'll say that uh, uh, the color will be gray maybe a slightly darker gray. Great, so you can see those points. Uh, there's kind of a relationship there, but I definitely cannot, uh, I, I definitely cannot fit a straight line to it, right? It's not possible. Uh, cannot find C where Y equals X times C, right? I can't do that, right? There's too much noise in the system. Okay, so how can I use projection matrices in this case to replace this Y with something that I could actually solve for. And, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just grab my uh, my equation up here, this P matrix. And uh, and so down here, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna compute this P based on, on my X. And I, and I guess down here, I actually have been using lowercase X. And the reason why is that it's one dimensional, right? It's just this one column, but uh, it doesn't matter, right? I can do that the same, right? So I'm gonna do that and uh, and let me look at this P here. Still, still a pretty large matrix, right? Even though I have only one one column now, and uh, and I can use it. I can multiply it by my Y, right? And I get this other thing, right? So this is um, maybe I'll call this my P vector, 
And, uh, and let me just kind of add this back to my original data frame. I'm gonna say um, data frame, I'm gonna add a P column equals to my BP, and then I'm just gonna flatten that. And then I'm gonna look at my data frame again. Okay, so, so what happened here? Uh, I was trying to find a relationship between uh, X and Y, a perfect linear relationship, and it wasn't possible. And uh, so instead I added this new column P, and it is going to be possible to find a perfect relationship between, uh, between the P and, and the X. And, uh, and you can see that P is pretty close to Y, but there are some minor differences, right? That, that's why this is working out great, right? So P has, um, uh, it, it's close to my Y, but it can actually fit to my X. Um, and, and so let me just plot that and we can actually see what it looks like. Uh, I'm gonna do the same plotting I did before. Um, down here, uh, that was all good, and uh, and let me let me plot the same thing. But instead of plotting uh, x against y, I'm gonna plot x against p. I'm gonna make that like a red line. We we can find c where p equals x times c. So let me do that, and uh, and and actually, it's plotting these on two different things. Let me let me do this. I'm gonna say this first one returns an ax, and down here I'm gonna pass that in ax equals ax. And you can see what it did to those gray points, right? Actually, let me make those a little bit lighter now again, so you can see the contrast. Right, it replaced all of those. Um, let me actually make it black, I think, just uh, so people can really see. It replaced all those gray points with those very similar black points. And now you can see the black points lie on a perfect line. And, and so I can actually compute, can compute a slope here. Um, how, how could I do that? Um, well, I'm only really solving for one variable, and I have, what, I guess like 10 equations. And, and so I could really solve it by any of them, right? I could say something like data frame of, um, of P divided by data frame of, of X, and that's trying to do an element wise. And I can see that my slope is 2.027, right? From many of those uh, equations, I could have figured that out. And, uh, and that's great, right? Because when I was randomly generating my data, if I had all the way back here, what was y? y was two times x plus some noise. And so I rediscovered that that too. And, and this is what I'll generally encourage you to do when you're learning new um, kind of linear algebra or, or maybe machine learning techniques. Randomly generate some data where you know what the underlying pattern is and then see if you can use these machine learning techniques to pull that back out from the noisy data. Can you under uh, kind of uncover that original signal. Okay, great, so uh, I will leave it off there.